My name is Justin Quinnell and this is the life of a pinhole photographer. Anything could go wrong. I think that with pinhole photography, I absolutely adore the fact you don't know what's going to happen. Photography, the convention of it, had become a three kittens in a basket, five foot off the ground, sixtieth of a second. That is a correct picture. Whereas pinhole photography sort of like washes all that away and it can start becoming elements of sculpture. You start looking at the element of time. So you'd start doing images which aren't a 60th of a second or 25th of a second. You're starting to look beyond vision, beyond where you can see yourself. Now I have been teaching it and doing it for about 22 years. Uh, started off doing fine art photography and did a degree in photography. And I now do anything connected with pinhole photography. Teaching happened when somebody came up to me and said, have you ever taught evening classes? I said no, and he said, bad luck, you start tomorrow. And then I was doing my own photography and got a bit disillusioned with it. I got involved with environmental politics and I thought that my photography wasn't doing anything of any use. At the same time, I was teaching kids who couldn't afford cameras. They could afford loads of cans of Coke every day. And I thought, right, we'll use cans to make cameras out of. And I got hooked. So I got, that was about 23 years ago, um, just started taking pinhole pictures, everybody had the same camera, and um, it sort of evolved from then on, really. The pinhole is the original optical um, device for experimenting, it goes back to ancient Greek times, and it's basically creating an image using a small hole rather than a lens. Well, I, I sussed out how to do these images after several other people, um, but I, I sussed it out on my own. And I just put 25 cameras up. One of them was the Clifton Suspension Bridge one, which I didn't think would survive, and uh, left it for six months. It's somewhere that I grew up with. Um, it's got a lot of connections. I worked in the wood uh, across the other side. Uh, I used to cycle there a lot when I was a kid. And it's one of the iconic images that um, you know, we have in Bristol. I originally took the Clifton Suspension Bridge image uh, from up here. Um, it was using a step ladder, it was pretty high, um, it was from winter, I put it up in the middle of the night, it was freezing, took it down in the middle of summer, it was quite hot, amazed it survived. Just to be able to do that picture, you know, six months, take it down, see the image had appeared, and to uh, know that one had sort of, let's say, got a six months in the life of that sort of object, and. Uh, it, it's just an iconic picture, one that worked really well. I think what I try and do, and I'm desperate to do, is play. I, you know, it's the liberating yourself from the have to. It's sort of like seeing what happens if, and finding all those fun elements. varied in size from tiny little things that can fit inside your mouth. Little 35mm film pots, adapted 35mm cameras. Uh, then we go a bit higher up into the sort of beer can size of life. This is my wheelie bin pinhole camera. Pinhole there. And uh, you put photographic paper around the back. You expose it 10 minutes. And then the last thing I've got is my, my spinning cameras. This one here is exposing looking at this pinhole camera, and this one's exposing looking at that pinhole camera, and they sort of spin around. So it's just giving objects a vision and seeing what happens next, but there's a, there's a whole load of uh, experimentation out there to do. This is where I think things, and we've got stuff, loads and loads of stuff. Well, and, you know, it's when you do a workshop for a load of kids and they sort of like say, you know, there's loads of beer cans you get from the recycling box or you may have made them yourself or emptied them um, and they build their cameras and at the end of the day they say, can we take the camera home? And you think, wow, yeah, it's an empty beer can, you know, and they've suddenly seen this resource, but it becomes a resource apart from a bit of rubbish. And being able to inspire wonder is just the cherry on top of the cake with it all. And I think that's the important bit with all sorts of photography, it would be lens-based or pinhole or anything, is doing stuff and also sort of a, 
in a way, making yourself a bit vulnerable. I mean, there's a real fine line between, you know, being a fine artist and being treated like a nerk. And uh, it's an interesting one to walk, you know, sort of like doing pictures from inside your mouth. It's not exactly sort of Don McCullen war photography, but it definitely is sort of like in a sort of strange tightrope where you are getting people, you know, saying wacky in every other sentence and stuff like that. It's not being fed the technological auto button. It's not being fed simply gadget expectation. You're having to learn and discover and combining with that, let's say the images of the sun uh, over six months is connecting people with astronomy and anything that makes people realize we're on a tiny bit of world um, with limited resources in a, quite a big amount of space is probably quite important. Uh, what we're going to do today though is there's a nice sign celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Downs and we're going to position a camera up behind there which hopefully people won't notice. So uh, if you're reading this and stuff or seeing this on the, on the telly, keep quiet. So I'm going to put it there. Not knowing what's going to happen is a really big part of it. I don't want to know. I want to sort of like find and experience and discover things accidentally. And uh, that really is the excitement for, it, for me. Uh, if I know what's going to happen in life, then you might as well top yourself. Because like, you know, if you know what's happening tomorrow, there's no point. But pinhole photography, every image that's created is an unknown to the quantity. You don't quite know what's going to happen. It's, it's magic. You just suddenly uncover something that's never ever been seen before. Every single time, you do not know. I'm very good at aiming a beer can. Somebody said this to me a while back, that when it comes to beer can cameras, I am probably the best person in the world who knows what might be in the picture. And I'm still rubbish. If you are interested in something and find something fascinating, you're not wrong. And the most important thing is to do it. Being bothered is the biggest thing you can do in your life, is to be bothered to. Because the alternative is not bothering, and that isn't having a life. I don't know, what's the question? I've got to go. Sorry, I've, I've messed up. <laughs>